Shane, when you face a, an explosive offense like KC's, obviously you want sacks and turnovers, but is it a matter of just making them earn everything they get, not give up those big, you know, back-breaking 60-yard plays? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, and they've done a good job of that, too. I think they got the most 10-plus play drives in the league right now. But ultimately, all the time, no matter who you're playing, you want to try to eliminate those explosives, make them, make them earn it, make them string plays together. Um, the more plays they have, the more opportunities for us to create a negative one or possibly get a turnover or something come with it, right? So um, that's a big emphasis every week, probably even more so this week with who they got on the perimeter out there and all that speed. Hey, you guys lost Christian Fulton you know, to IR. Um, Caleb Farley now on IR. Chris Jackson got banged up um, in Monday's game as well. Just what's your comfort level with the, the cornerback spot at this point? Yeah, I mean, we've had guys out here who have been with us. Um, I mean, Chris Jones has been with us. He's been practicing. He's been engaged in meetings. Um, we, we got Maven back, um, who's been with us all spring, all fall. Um, obviously, breon has been there. He's been in some games for us. So, I mean, we got guys who are familiar with with us at least, right? It's not like somebody coming off the street and we got to get them ready. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing who, who kind of rises to the challenge and takes advantage of the opportunity, right? That's what this league's about. I mean, everybody's dealing with injuries right now, so got to find the next guy, whoever it is, get in there and hopefully takes advantage of the opportunity. I've never seen Elijah. Injuries, the attitude doesn't change when a guy goes down right next man up, but logistically, what adjustments do you have to make when you're losing maybe two, three guys? Yeah, I mean, you're having to work through it on the sideline. Just you have different personnel groups and some of that stuff, depending on how many go down, you, you kind of got to adjust that. You might get out of something, right? Um, certain calls, depending, right? So I think it's a fluid deal. Uh, you, most of the time, usually if it's just one guy, hopefully you got everything still intact. I and mean, when you get to the multiple guys at a, at a spot, that's when you really got to kind of come together as a staff and, hey, what, what does this guy know? He's been in there. He hasn't really repped there. Like, that's when you really got to come together and figure out what we can actually get done with a guy who hasn't really done it in practice. Have you seen Elijah kind of grow recently here and from the because mistakes early and how important is he here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think just his comfort level out there, I think he's gaining confidence every day. Um, I think he's understanding kind of his role and the expectation of him in certain calls and where his help is and all those little things that we've talked about. I think he's growing. I do. I think he's growing. Um, and I've been encouraged with him these past couple of weeks. This is experience to get Mahomes help, and maybe what do you tell guys that haven't played against him as far as what to, to be prepared for? Yeah, I mean, I think you got to be prepared for the un unpredictable with him. Um, I mean, he makes plays out of the pockets with his feet. I mean, he buys time, and he can throw it from every angle, off every foot, um, no matter where he's at on the field. Um, I think you just got to try to do your best to keep him contained. Um, because again, they got those fast guys on the perimeter, and they're turns into backyard football. He gets out of the pocket; those guys are just looking to separate, and and they're playing backyard football, and it's it's tough to keep up with them. Um, but I think, in regards to Mahomes, you just got to try to do your best to make him play quarterback without all the other stuff that he's able to produce and create on his own. Obvious, like down and distance. Like, how do you manage? Like, okay, we want to keep that vertical shot from killing us, but then Kelsey underneath. Like, how do you manage? Like, which one to, to focus on? Yeah, it's a fine line. I mean, whenever you uh, they have multiple threats in different spots, like you you got to weigh the battle a little bit. You're going to have to take your chances. Where at times we're going to have to hold up on some of those deep shots um, and understand what's going on, so we can eliminate some of those shorter throws. Um, but it's kind of a pick your poison, so to speak, at certain times. And I think being mindful of that within the game and also guys understanding, hey, I'm vulnerable to the shot in this call. Or, hey, I'm, we're a little more vulnerable underneath. Or we got to be a little quicker matching some of that stuff. Like, I think understanding the call and kind of where our vulnerab vulnerabilities are with each call plays a factor, too. Built confidence with this defense just in terms of the red zone, especially in this last game, and being able to come up so big on plays like that. Yeah, I mean, it's been huge. Um, I mean, ultimately, I think that kind of won us the game this past week, being able to find ways to keep them to three points, whether it was early in the game um, or the start of the second half where they weren't able to take a two-score lead. I mean, those were huge stops for us. I think it goes back to our guys' mentality. Like, when they're out there, no matter how they get there, no matter 
whether they drive it, whether they get an X play, we got to find a way to keep playing, keep playing the next play, forget about it. Like everything shrunk down there. We just got to be able to lock in and find ways to hold them three because ultimately it changes the game. Where do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think anytime you're you're kind of going in the game, you never really know what you're going to get. Certain teams do a little bit more early on than other teams, um, but just trying to get into the flow of the game, make sure we can handle all their punches early as best we can. Um, I mean, it kind of showed up a little bit Monday night, right, where they were kind of driving the ball, and we had some missed tackles on that first drive that cost us. But then being able to find a way to eventually hold them to three and get off the field, I think it just adds a little bit of confidence. It gives you a little jolt of life, like, hey, we'll be okay. Like, we held them to three, we'll regroup, we'll kind of get going. But I think definitely early on, before you kind of get into the flow of the game, you've got to be prepared, and you've got to be able to take some punches and hopefully give them back. But at the same time, you've got to keep playing. Your reaction, I guess, on the on the play Simmons made to end the game, and kind of what's what, what have you watched it on tape? What did you like about what he did? Yeah, I mean, it's it's defensive line play. He was lower than the guy across from him. He attacked the line of scrimmage. He knocked him back. Um, I mean, it's every he was aware of the situation, what they were going to do, um, dialed in in the moment. So, I mean, it's everything we kind of preach, everything we ask for from those guys, the physicality, from a physicality standpoint, from a awareness standpoint. Um, I mean, I was excited as everybody else. I don't even know who I, who I tried to find to celebrate with. But, uh, I mean, it was exciting. It was a huge play for us. Great stop. Um, hopefully we can continue to build on that type of stuff. Shane, why do you think you guys have been so good in those kind of goal to go, a goal to go um, situations when there's kind of the most pressure to kind of keep them out? Even if you know some yards are given up, you guys are able to hold them up right in front of the end zone. Why, why do you think you guys have found so much success there? Yeah, I think it goes back to being resilient. Like telling these guys, we got to be able to play the next play. Like nothing's ever over. We got to make them try to earn everything. Like I said before, whether they get down there with the X play, hopefully not. Or they drive it down there, hopefully not. But when they get down there, we got to find ways to keep playing. Don't cave in because I think they understand the importance, whether it's fourth down and we get a stop or ultimately getting them the third down and getting a red zone stop. They understand the importance of those four points, right? Go ahead. See, when we talked to uh, uh, Simmons yesterday, you know, as, as, as much as he'd made some big plays, he seemed to – almost compare himself uh, not in such a great light compared to last year. Uh, um, said he still has, you know, he still feels like he's not playing at his best this year. I mean, do, do you see anything along those lines? Yeah, I think just uh, consistency with his technique and fundamentals, right? Like, he's a tough dude to move regardless, um, but I think you see the difference between when he's lower, extended, all those, all those things technique-wise, right? Like, it's a totally different game than when he's kind of maybe playing a little bit high or hands are outside. Those guys can kind of handle him a little bit more or you don't see the impact from him, so to speak, when he's a little inconsistent technique-wise. What'd you get from Hooker? What'd you get from Hooker having him back in there? Yeah, man, it was great to have Hook back. Um, I mean, he's a pro. Like, he's been engaged throughout the whole IR process, everything. Um, I mean, he actually ended up playing more than, than we envisioned him because of where things kind of got to in the game. Um, but it's great having him out there. He's a good communicator. Him and KB work well together. Um, he's, he's comforting to me, getting him out there too. So. You watch his defense play, maybe, if nothing else, you see a level of comfort, especially with the conceptual understanding. Yeah, I think it's improved. I do. I think, I think we've kind of improved, and we've kind of made an emphasis to – to simplify in regards with some of that stuff um, where we can make sure we're getting lined up and we can play fast because ultimately if they don't know it ain't going to look very good they're not going to play as fast all the things that go with that um, but yeah I've been encouraged with kind of how they've been able to go week to week and what, whatever we're doing defensively um, and whatever we're going to see offensively being able to turn the page and kind of get get the game plan down so to speak we just we still got our MAs right like we got to eliminate them um, Still got our MAs, but at the same time, I think as a whole and the, the number overall has been decreased. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, 
when you're at home and it's loud, I think that's a huge, huge aspect of it, right? You can't always hear what's going on. You got to be able to communicate um, without talking, right? So I think that's a huge part of it. Um, it's a fine line between make sure you get the call, but make sure you're ready when that ball snapped too, where you're not looking around everywhere. But got to be able to do it just because of the noise.